If you want to build a web app that actually works and without wasting too much time or money, then definitely stick around because I'm about to save you from the seven biggest mistakes people make with web app builders. And these can really be the pitfalls that can turn your brilliant idea into a buggy mess or even worse, a total flop. But don't you worry because by the end of this video, you'll know exactly how to dodge these mistakes. Plus, you'll get a bonus crash course on testing your app before actually launching it. So without wasting any more time, let's dive in. Okay, so first up, one of the biggest mistakes I see creators making is jumping into building their web app without a clear purpose. I mean, it's like packing for a trip with no clue where you're going. So I mean, good luck getting it right, because when you don't nail down what your app is for, you're basically asking the builder to guess what it's for. Well, spoiler alert, it won't. You'll waste time tweaking and end up with something that doesn't even solve the problem that you had in your mind. For example, saying something like, I want a fitness app is way too vague. I mean, are we talking workout tracking? Are we talking meal planning? Or maybe it could be a gym locator, but I mean, without these specifics, you're just gonna set yourself up for a lot of disappointment. So instead, try prompting it with something like this. Let's think, I want a fitness app for beginners to log daily workouts, track progress with charts, set goals, and get weekly email updates. And the primary audience is beginners who need some extra motivation and clear visual feedback on their improvements. And just like that, the prompt is now crystal clear. I mean, for example, think about how different Strava and MyFitnessPal are. Both are fitness apps, but serve completely different purposes. And I mean, being specific is gonna be your superpower here. It saves time and gets you an app that actually delivers. Okay, now moving on to mistake number two, which would be using ambiguous language. Now, if your instructions are unclear, well, guess what? Your results will be too. Now, this leads to constant back and forth revisions that completely drain your time and your patience. And a wrong approach would be telling your web app builder to prompt something like make it look good and work well for users. Now, the problem with this prompt would be that good and well are completely subjective terms. And without specific design parameters and functionality requirements, you're setting yourself up for a lot of disappointment. Now, a better approach and prompt for this would be something like create a minimalist design with the blue and white color scheme, make the home page feature a prominent sign up button and include testimonials from current users. Also ensure the navigation menu is accessible on both mobile and desktop views with a maximum of five main categories. So I mean, the first prompt example that I gave leaves everything open to interpretation, while the second one that I just gave gives specific direction. And remember, web app builders work best when you're clear and specific about what you want. Now also, since we're using AI tools, we think that we can just tell it to create all of these cool things and sometimes we might get carried away with that. And that leads us into the third common mistake and that is overloading our prompts. And believe me, I've been guilty of this so many times. I mean, you've got a million ideas and you want them all in that app, right? Well, let me tell you, it's something like stuffing a suitcase until it completely bursts. And I mean, could be cool in theory, but it's just a mess in practice. And too many features at once just clog up your app and confuse your users. So imagine prompting the AI with something ridiculous like this. Let's say create a social media app with user profiles, photo sharing, messaging, video calls, group chat, marketplaces, event planning, dating features, job board, and restaurant reviews. Also add dark mode, multiple language options, and accessibility features. I mean, this is basically trying to create Facebook, Instagram, Zoom, Tinder, LinkedIn, and Yelp all in a one app. I mean, it sounds completely ridiculous. And no web app builder can effectively integrate all of these complex features in one go. So instead, try writing something like create a social media app focused on photo sharing with simple user profiles, including the ability to follow other users and like slash comment on photos. I mean, look at Instagram. It began with filters 
and photos and then grew into this big beast it is today. So basically just start small, nail the core and build on from there. You can always add more features later, but starting with a very focused approach will give you better results. Okay guys, so we all want our web apps to look amazing, but let me tell you that functionality should never take a backseat to aesthetics. Focusing only on the visuals is a mistake particularly common among creative professionals who naturally prioritize visual appeal, but it can really lead to apps that look great but perform really poorly. I mean, just for example, picture this prompt. Let's say you want to tell the builder, make my productivity app stunning with animated task transitions, a sleek glass morphism design, and a dynamic background that shifts colors throughout the day. I mean, that sounds super cool, but what about the core stuff like adding tasks, setting deadlines, or syncing across all devices? Without those, it's pretty shell that won't help anyone get stuff done. And to improve on that prompt that I gave you as an example earlier, try something like for example this. So just say, build a productivity app with a clean design, an easy to use task entry system, and a reliable notification for deadlines. And keep it simple but functional. I mean, for example, look at Google Tasks. It's really basic, not super flashy, but it works like a charm. And remember, the most beautiful app in the world is absolutely useless if people can't figure out how to use it. Balance is key here. Now, let's come on to mistake number five, which is ignoring feedback from your web app builder. And when it flags a problem or suggests a tweak, it's not just being annoying, it's actually trying to save you. Brushing it off is like ignoring your GPS in a brand new city. So a classic mistake here is continuing to submit the same instructions after receiving feedback that certain features just aren't possible within the platform's limitations. This creates a really frustrating cycle where neither party gets what they want and you just waste time and energy pushing for impossible features while the web app builder can't deliver what you're asking for. And meanwhile, viable alternatives that could achieve similar goals remain completely unexplored. So instead, try an approach and a prompt like, I noticed my request for real-time video editor isn't working well with this platform's capabilities. Let's pivot to a really simpler approach with basic video trimming and text overlay features instead. What alternatives could you recommend that could achieve similar functionality within the platform's strengths? So now I know that sometimes you don't want to make compromises at all, but being adaptable and willing to adjust your vision based on the capabilities of your chosen platform will actually save you countless hours of frustration. And sometimes the best solution is a slight pivot rather than just pushing against technical limitations. Okay, now mistake number six is a big one. So listen up, especially for your wallet, it's a big one. And that is wasting message credits. This is especially important if you're using a platform with limited message credits or interactions. Each credit is valuable and using them inefficiently means you'll end up paying more or hitting your limits before your project is actually complete. So a common wrong approach is using a separate prompt for each tiny change. Like for example, make the button blue, then actually no, make it green, then move it to the right a bit. Now this piecemeal approach burns through credits really rapidly for what could have been accomplished in a single well thought out request. So a better approach for this would be something like, hey, please make the following changes to the homepage. So first change the call to action button color to green, then move it slightly to the right to align with the form below, and finally increase its size by 10% to improve its visibility. And just bundling related changes into comprehensive prompts helps you maximize your credits by a lot and get a lot more value from each interaction with your web app builder. And I'm sure you want to get your money's worth at the end of the day from all these web app builders out there. Okay, and the last mistake on the list today is actually the last thing you do before you launch your web app, and that's forgetting to attach a real domain to it. I mean, nothing screams amateur like launching your web app with a generic subdomain, yet it's a step many creators overlook until after they've built their entire application. 
I mean, a custom domain builds credibility, improves brand recognition, and makes your web app a lot easier to find and remember. Plus, it's essential for SEO as well. And using a temporary or a generic domain makes your business just look really fishy and unprofessional, and potentially it could drive away customers before they even try out your service. And I mean, connecting a domain is usually super straightforward with most web app builders. And with Hosting Your Horizons, you can easily connect any domain you own or purchase a new one directly through the platform. And if you're actually stuck with coming up with a domain name, our AI domain generator tool will help you out. And I'll leave a link for it in the description below this video. Okay, so we've covered some essential mistakes to avoid when creating your web app, but the biggest mistake of all would be to launch your web app into the world without properly testing it first. And many creators rush through this step eager to go live, but proper testing can really prevent embarrassing bugs and security issues that could potentially harm your reputation a lot. So let me walk you through a really quick and comprehensive testing approach that will ensure your web app is ready for prime time. So first off, always, always start with functionality testing. This is where you verify that all features work as expected. I mean, you want to test each user flow from start to finish, like registration, a login, and also purchases. And also make sure all of your forms validate input correctly and submit data properly. And don't forget to check that your error messages are clear and really helpful because there's nothing worse than cryptic error code that leaves users really, really frustrated. I mean, it's happened to me before as well. Next, you'll want to do cross browser testing. I mean, because believe it or not, your app might look perfect in Chrome, but completely broken in, let's say, Safari. So test across all major browsers like Chrome, Firefox, Safari, and Edge. And if you can, don't just test the latest versions because many users don't update their browsers really regularly. And tools like Browser Stack can be super helpful here, so you don't need to have dozens of different devices devices laying around. And also mobile responsiveness testing is absolutely non-negotiable these days. You need to test on various screen sizes from phones to tablets to desktops and in both portrait and landscape orientations as well. I mean, I've seen so many apps that look, let's say, great on an iPhone, but are just unusable on Androids or work in portrait mode, but break completely when you rotate your device. And now performance testing might sound really technical, but it's really about making sure your app doesn't leave users waiting. I mean, you want to measure page load speeds and aim for under, let's say three seconds because users will abandon anything slower than that usually. And also check server response times under different loads, especially if you're expecting traffic spikes. And tools like Apoj, JMeter, or Gatling can help you simulate high traffic to see how your app handles pressure. So really make sure to check them out. They can make your life a lot easier. And finally, do not skip security testing. I mean, you need to protect your users by testing authentication systems for vulnerabilities. Also checking form inputs for SQL injection and cross-site scripting attacks. And also verifying data encryption during transmission is very, very important. And the OWASB Zap tool is great for scanning for common security issues, many of which you might not even be aware of. So taking the time to test thoroughly will help you catch issues before your users do, creating a more professional and polished final product that people will actually want to use and recommend to others. Now, if you are ready to put these tips into action and build an app that shines, you should definitely check out Hosting Your Horizons. I mean, whether you're prototyping a wild idea or launching a full-blown web app, Horizons has you covered. With Hosting Your Horizons, you get one-click deployment to go live fast, a 30-day money-back guarantee for peace of mind, and as a bonus, all of Horizon's plans include a free month of hosting. So if you're interested, click the link in the description of this video to join the early access of Horizons today and use our promo code HZN10 at checkout for an extra 10% off your purchase. Also guys, make sure to jump into the official Horizons Discord server too, as you'll find some really interesting stuff there. And you'll find the link in the description for the Discord server as well.
Well, that wraps it up, guys. I've covered seven mistakes to avoid and a solid testing plan and also a helpful tool to get your app going. Let me know in the comments below which tips stood out to you the most. I'd really, really love to hear your thoughts about this. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you enjoyed this video, that is. And if you plan to start building your web app with Horizons, make sure to watch this video next where I take you through the step-by-step -step process of how to do it. And Thank you so much for watching, guys. I will see you in the next video.